more than human. And welcome to the channel. My name is Joseph Carroll. I write under the pen name J.R. Carroll. And today we are going to talk about Cradle. Um, it has, <laughs> Cradle has been a book series that has taken over um, 2022, not just for me, but for thousands of other uh, fantasy readers. It has been a while since I've seen a series um, do what Cradle has done and kind of, th there's been books, of course. We, I mean, you have that every year where certain books will just take off, but um, it, it's, it's been a long time since a series has just compounded and everyone's like, oh, you know, so many people are reading so many of the books all at once. Um, I mean, Dresden kind of has that every once in a while. Uh, you'll get a flush of new readers and, you know, they'll go through, but Cradle is so something different. Um, and it's been just a freaking amazing journey to run through all these Cradle books this year and finally get caught up right at the end of the year. Um, and, you know, if you've never read Cradle, um, I'm going to try not to do too many crazy spoilers with these, but these are going to be, you know, the 10 best characters um, in Cradle so far. And so make sure you're liked and subscribed if you like this kind of content and let's get into the list. So starting off at number 10, we have North Strider. Um, North Strider is kind of your archetypical brooding, you know, you know, male character. But um, what he does for the series, um, once he's introduced, is he is that kind of, you know, almost a Superman-like character, right? He's so... Um, powerful and he looms over everyone um, there's been multiple occasions where he just shows up and he just take he just takes over does what he wants um, he doesn't he's not a, a bad guy um, but he, you know he's also just like this is the way it is I know more than you do I'm better than you are we're doing it my way um, and for our, you know, our main characters, he's always this looming presence of, okay, we have to do certain things, but we gotta make sure we stay out of the uh, kind of the sight or you don't want to get the ire of Northstrider. Um, so he's definitely a fun character to see everybody interact with. And now number nine is malice and I some people you know people feel differently about her I almost feel like she is a type of villain um, in this book series um, but she um, you know she's one of the strongest characters uh, as well um, close to being on the, the level of North Strider I would say but um, she has more of a personality than North Strider, she's she's very funny. She misses with um, with the characters, um, especially you know um, she'll miss with Mercy, and you know kind of um, jab at her that she maybe she wants to be or maybe the main character Lyndon wants to be with her, um, and then she kind of she even does the same thing to Lyndon, which um, I, I like how she just makes people very uncomfortable, <laughs> um, so. That is why she's in number nine on the list. Now, going into number eight, this guy, true villain. Um, maybe the only true villain on the list um, because most of the most of the villains here or the big bads, I guess you would say, are don't really have much of a personality. But the Silent King um, is, is a really good personality. He's kind of has that like, I've been around for thousands of years. I'm, you know, I am, you know, unkillable. Uh, I'm all, you know, I know kind of, kind of a North Strider type, but even to another level um, where he's trying to take over the world. He's a mind, and it, I, I always think of, you know, people who can take over the mind 
to be even more evil um, and that is his you know his main thing is just taking over people's minds um, and he does that on a worldwide scale um, and you know and they say he's like the he's like a like a tiger um, so <laughs> you know I don't know why but tigers uh, or tiger like people you know, beings get cast as bad people and they normally do pretty well. Um, so we'll run into number seven, which is mercy. And mercy is this um, kind of clumsy, goofy character that has the undertones of being very, um, you know, very powerful, but she, you know, she kind of stumbles and, and she, um, I don't know, she kind of gives off this vibe, like she really kind of wants to be liked, um, but, you know, she can't tell everybody everything for the longest time, um, so she does keep a lot of secrets from people, but she she's a very, um, you know, funny, sweet character, uh, and, you know, I like characters with bows. I don't know why characters with bows always tend to have really good personalities, whether they're um, angry personalities or kind of more like her is like a clumsy sweet personality, but uh, Mercy is a fun character to read um, and then six is um, and You'll notice a lot um, Will White writes terrific um, humor into his characters and Maybe none better than Fisher Gesher or yeah <laughs> she is um, she's this old old lady who walks around on like these um, spider legs and I, she gives our main character Lyndon the hardest the hardest time she's like that old grandmother who you can never be good enough you always have to be better um, and she expects perfection you know and she's always like it always it always feels like she's whipping Lyndon into shape and always like oh why didn't you do this or why didn't you do that mm -hmm. yes oh you could have been doing this instead you're out doing this um, I mean I just every time I almost feel like she stills she stills the scene every time she comes on onto the page um, uh, Fisher is just amazing now we're into our top five here so number five, um, and maybe this would be, uh, she would be higher on some people's list, but I mean, top five is not bad. Um, I have Yaren at, at top, in our fifth spot here. Um, Yaren is kind of this, you know, lone samurai type, uh, type character. Um, and for the longest time, you don't get a lot of underlying feelings uh, of her. She's more just, I hate the world. Uh, I, I'm gonna slash everybody down um, but slowly but surely um, you know we start you know tearing away at that um, and her and it you know her and Lyndon you know ha, you know have this um, weird um, personality where they push each other forward but they also pull each other together um, and I think she's a great um, contrast character for Lyndon uh, you know and I love how she just never stops you know pushing not only Lyndon but herself to new heights um, great character um, number four is every you know, everybody's favorite spirit Dross um, he uh, his evolution of his personality you know is hilarious even when he kind of had an alternate ego thing going on um, he is so funny he's like um, you know if you were if you haven't read cradle yet um, he's kind of like uh, almost a Bob the skull or a Skippy the magnificent kind of almost this all almost like this all-knowing AI type of character um, that is very snarky um, very much like gives percentages and uh, bleak outcomes but is funny why he's delivering it um, but his character also grows and grows closer um, to our main character and it becomes a great companion and um, 
kind of outgrows that he's just the AI character type um, by the end here. Uh, and I think he's most everybody's one of their top favorites. And then uh, number three, for the longest time, was my favorite. Um, and then it, you know, it kind of shuffled around. But Orthos is number three. Uh, Orthos is is kind of where you have uh, Fisher. Uh, Fisher Fisher is your your grandmother type. Orthos is kind of the grand the grumpy grandfather type. He's back in my day, the dragons. He's like, don't be, you know, it's, it's kind of like, don't be a wimp, Linden. Go out there, fight them head on. A dragon never retreats and blah, blah, blah. But then also he'll, he contradicts himself all the time, which is the best. Nothing is better than when Orthos, you know, uh, you know, kind of contradicts himself. And then, of course, him, his fear of heights is just... Um, hilarious you know this big tough giant turtle he's basically you know uh, you know the the you know this turtle I think they say is the size of a big horse or something um, <laughs> but he just he, he hates heights and like ducking in in his shell and then when whenever they get back on the ground he's like he you know he pops back into his tough guy mode and he's like girl oh, is never the way to travel um, but you know or, you know, you know it's going to be a good scene when Orthos is in it, for sure. All right. We are down here to the final two. Um, and I'm pretty sure everybody knows who the top two is. But let's, if you know Cradle, but um, let's reveal number two. And that is Lyndon, our main character. Um, he is a amazing character and at first I'm not gonna lie at first in the first book or two I was kind of he he did kind of seem annoying to me um, but I love his fighting spirit um, and how he always had to overcome these more powerful characters by trickery for the long for the longest time it was you know it was technique 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 um, and figuring out a way around because his power level was so low compared to everybody else. And I think that really helped him here in the last few books once his power level started to rise. He already had all these tricks up his sleeve that he could use against these people to compound, but he has this never say die attitude. He's he's almost, um, and I know a lot of cradle people don't like you know the comparisons of uh, Dragon Ball, but um, if you are into Dragon Ball, it's kind of that Goku level character where he's like, I always have to break my limits. Um, whatever limits I have, um, I'm not going to settle. If I have to break through the ceiling, I will. Um, and some of his quotes are just great. Um, you know, Linden is an amazing um, main character and I can't wait to see what happens here in the next book, which I believe is our last. So, um, but number one, could it have been anybody other than Ethan? Um, Ethan is just, um, he's the type of, like his character type is maybe my favorite character type in all of fantasy I'm not so sure that he could um, I mean will will white could probably do a book of nothing but Ethan but his character type alone is hard to hold a book but for him to be popping in and out um, is just crazy good he's the he he is super smart but yet he acts like a buffoon to trick all these other characters into lowering their guard he is super powerful, um, but only reveals it you basically at the last second to not give you time to be prepared for how strong he is. And he always, he runs gambits on everybody. Um, you know, he's, um, you know, if, 
if he loses the fight, well, he won by doing something. You did something to help him over here. If he wins the fight, well, then he wins the fight and he wins this section. I mean, he is amazing. So many secrets that get revealed through Ethan. Um, Ethan has the best quotes. Um, and, you know, he, you know, he could be laying there, uh, you know, bleed, you know, bleeding out seemingly. And when people come up to ask him if he's all right, the first thing is he, he asks them is, I, is there sap in my hair? You, you would tell me if there's sap in my hair, wouldn't you? You know, because not only does he have to be the most powerful, but he's got to be the best looking too. Um, <laughs> uh, but you know, I mean, I, I can, I can understand that. I mean, come on now. Um, but that is, is my top 10 cradle characters um let me know what your favorite cave, uh, cradle characters are in the comments here make sure you're liked and subscribed um we're gonna try to keep this cradle thing going see what else uh we can pull out of here um i'm gonna try and be one of the first to review the new book when it comes out uh and i can't wait to continue this journey with you all and i'll catch you in the 